Indeed, the Sun is a colossal celestial body, composed mainly of hot, glowing gas. Its enormous size is truly astounding. Its mass is equivalent to about 333,000 planets, the size of the Earth combined. However, in the grand scheme of the universe, the Sun is not considered unusual or unique. There are billions and billions of stars like the Sun scattered throughout the cosmos. Estimated to number in the sextillion, more than grains of sextillion, more than grains of sand on all the beaches of Earth. While the Sun may be considered a medium-sized or even small star compared to others in the universe, it does possess certain distinctive characteristics. One notable aspect is its near perfect spherical shape, with a negligible difference of around 10 kilometers between its height and width. This uniformity adds to its unique appearance. Additionally, the Sun holds an intriguing feature in its composition. A tiny fraction of its mass, approximately 0.6%, is comprised of gold atoms. With the enormous mass of the Sun, this minuscule amount of gold turns into 1.2 sextillion kilograms. Imagine a colossal asteroid, similar to Ceres, measuring 913 kilometers in diameter. This celestial body possesses an astounding amount of gold, worth an astronomical sum of 7 million, 900,000 billion billion pounds. The most remarkable aspect of this scenario, however, is the presence of an intelligent life form on one of the planets in this system, which, interestingly enough, is worth less than all the gold contained in the sun. However, are we the sole intelligent beings in the galaxy? Astrophysicist Frank Drake devised an equation to estimate the number of intelligent civilizations in the galaxy. This equation takes into account several variables, although some of them cannot be precisely determined. One of the variables in Drake's equation refers to the duration for which a civilization actively emits signals into space. This particular element poses challenges in terms of precise definition, leading to different potential solutions. Interestingly, some calculations have estimated that there might be at least 156 million intelligent civilizations out there. Overall, scientists tend to maintain an optimistic outlook on the matter. As space explorers venture forth, they deploy probes that occasionally capture periodic bursts of radiation, adding to our understanding of the cosmos. As an illustration, back in 1967, astronomers Jocelyn Bell Burnell and Anthony Hewish detected a peculiar radio signal. that initially resembled a potential extraterrestrial communication. This enigmatic signal was whimsically named LGM, an abbreviation for Little Green Man. However, further investigation revealed that it was actually a pulsar, a newly discovered type of star. While pulsars could potentially be suns for other civilizations, it seems unlikely since dark planets in their vicinity would receive only X-rays which are not conducive to supporting life. Therefore, in our case, we have been fortunate with our own sun. Unless the sun is a pure carcinogen, ultraviolet light in the spectrum has the ability to penetrate the skin and cause damage to collagen, which can contribute to signs of aging. An interesting example of sun exposure's impact is evident in the case of a man who drove a milk truck for 28 years resulting in one side of his face being more exposed to the sun than the other. Similarly, a woman who worked as a secretary in a room with a window on the left side would experience differential sunlight exposure. But it was Galileo Galilei who had real health problems because of the sun. Galileo Galilei held the belief that our sun was the central celestial body in the universe with all other objects revolving around it. This idea, known as heliocentrism, sparked outrage and condemnation from the Holy Inquisition. Galileo was subjected to torture and pressure to recant his views. It's worth noting that another scientist, Giordano Bruno, met a tragic fate as he was burned at the stake by the Inquisition for his cosmological and philosophical beliefs. Over time, the influence and power of the Inquisition waned and its oppressive actions eventually ceased. But when will the sun go out? 
How can you tell? The sun undergoes nuclear fusion, specifically in its core, where temperatures reach a scorching 15 million degrees Celsius. In this process, four hydrogen atoms combine to form a single helium atom, liberating a tremendous amount of energy in the process. This energy release sustains the sun's radiance and heat. As the energy generated in the sun's core travels towards its surface, it takes a significant amount of time for this process to occur. Approximately 170,000 years are required for the energy to make its way from the core to the sun's surface. However, once it reaches the surface, it only takes about 8 minutes and 19 seconds for this energy to travel the vast distance from the sun to reach the Earth. The sun itself is estimated to be around 4.5 billion years old. During this extensive time span, the sun has completed approximately 20 orbits around the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Over the next 5.5 billion years, the luminosity of the sun will steadily increase. After approximately 6.5 billion years, a significant event will occur in the sun's core known as helium fusion. During this phase, carbon and oxygen will be synthesized through nuclear reactions. As a consequence, the sun will undergo a dramatic transformation, swelling to about 200 times its current size, becoming a red giant. As the sun expands, its outer envelope will cool down to around 3,000 degrees Celsius, resulting in the emission of predominantly red light. This is why red giants are characterized by their reddish appearance. The expansion of the sun during its red giant phase will have far-reaching consequences for the Earth. It is predicted that the sun's outer layers will engulf and swallow our planet, effectively bringing an end to life on Earth. As the sun continues its evolution, the helium in its core will eventually deplete, leading to a phase of instability. During this phase, the sun will undergo expansion and contraction cycles approximately every 100,000 years. On the fourth contraction, the momentum will be so intense that the outer shell of the sun will be violently ejected into space. At this stage, the sun will exhibit a stunning and captivating appearance. An example of a similar stellar object in our current time is the Eskimo Nebula, which shares certain characteristics with what our sun is expected to become. When a star like the Eskimo Nebula reaches the red giant phase, it sheds its outer layers, revealing a beautiful, intricate structure. These ejected materials create a planetary nebula, a captivating display of cosmic artistry. Eventually, after the expulsion of its outer layers, the sun will undergo a final transformation. It will collapse and shrink, becoming a dense, hot remnant known as a white dwarf. A typical white dwarf exhibits a density that is 200,000 times greater than that of the Earth, positioning it as one of the densest forms of matter in the universe, surpassed solely by neutron stars and black holes. Furthermore, if a white dwarf were to be poured into a Pepsi can, the resulting weight of the can would reach a staggering 990,000 tons. However, what occurs subsequently? The white dwarf proceeds to disperse the planets into far-reaching orbits. As the hydrogen fuel depletes, the core of the white dwarf enters a phase of cooling and solidifies into a crystalline carbon structure. To put it simply, the white dwarf will transform into a diamond-like structure as it cools down over an astonishing span of 10 quadrillion years, equivalent to 10 million billion years. Eventually, it will become a black dwarf. If the sun avoids collapsing into a black hole, it will continue to exist in the universe without any available hydrogen. Consequently, new stars will form while the old ones explode, leading to a sky that is entirely dark. Looking far ahead, all atomic particles will initiate a process of disintegration, causing all solid objects in the universe to behave like liquids. This is the fate that awaits the star that sustains our existence, a star that, in the past, led to the persecution of scientists by individuals who were largely intelligent. It is a star that, by sheer coincidence, is 400 times larger than the moon, but also 400 times more distant from the Earth than the moon. What grants us the remarkable symmetry of a solar eclipse? 
It is this celestial body, which once provided warmth to 8 billion people, that will traverse the universe without planets or any points of reference, remaining as the largest and most valuable gene ever known to humankind, a vast and enigmatic dark diamond. That's all for today, and as usual, pump your brains. Bye.